Why, hello devoted viewer, and welcome to what will be a spine-chilling episode of Inno Games TV. Since it's fall, we decided to be a little festive this month, so as you can see, it's Halloween-inspired. But that doesn't mean I won't bring you the latest updates on our games, and I'll also announce the iPhone 6 winner. So, if you like a tasty treat, take a seat, and let's get right on to the overview. Welcome to a new age. Forge of Empires introduces the new contemporary era, and I will announce the lucky iPhone competition winner. Lights out, spot on. We present to you the new Tribal Wars 2 TV spot. Halloween comes to Grepolis. Game designer Marcel gives you some insight on the new event. Get ready for battle. I'll show you some of the troops and rising generals. Merchants are back in Tribal Wars. The fall event will let you trade a special resource and win nice prizes. Attention the West players. The team introduces to you the brand new Day of the Dead event. And last but not least, we will show you our newest scholarship recipient. And what better way to start the show off than with the introduction of Forge of Empires New Age, the contemporary era. Hello, my name is Per Kröger. I'm a game designer at Forge of Empires and I'm proud to present to you today our new game age, the contemporary era. All right, people, look at this awesome new city made up out of contemporary era buildings. We tried to give them a little Asian theme. As you can see, like the buildings are full of detail. They seem to be uh, full of life, full of people, full of lights. And we have shop houses, which have shops integrated into residential buildings. We have shopping mall, we have a floating market and the fish market, buildings that are, are crowded with people that are overflowing with life. One thing uh, that we're very proud of is our new waterfront buildings. As you can see, some of the buildings, at least one building in every category, has a canal running there in front of it. And when you put them next to each other, it will look like there is a giant canal stretching through your city. It's a very nice effect. It doesn't really have a game effect, but um, if you want to have a nice looking city, that's the way to go. Um, there is something that actually does have a new effect on the game. This is the new military buildings, and four out of five out of those provide boosts that will boost your army um, when you attack or defend. Two of them provide the attacking boost and two of them provide defense boost. And now let's go and have a look at the new continent map. As you can see here, this is a desert themed map which will introduce three new province leaders which you will have to fight or negotiate their provinces. And as always, depending on your choices, the story will evolve a little differently. But for now, I want to show you the new battle with the new units, and here we go. This is a new battle. As we see here, we have plenty of new units. The first thing you will notice is our helicopters. Yes, we do have flying units in the game. They can actually uh, quickly fly over all sorts of terrain. They just ignore terrain and treat every single field the same way. They can even move over water. They are very fast and have a brutal attacking force, so prepare for them in battle. Then there is the strike team. Look at these guys here. They can uh, move through all sorts of terrain as well. They're specialized forces. They can even move and enter water. Then look at the new tanks here. They have an awesome skill, the reactive armor. So that makes them very sustainable in battle. Um, the reactive armor has a value coming with it. And um, the unit can never take more damage than shown by this value in a single attack. So which means if you have reactive arm of four, that means this unit can never take more than four damage from a single attack. And last but not least, there is our awesome missile artillery. They're really big, badass missiles. Um, they only have one drawback. They shoot only once and are removed from battle afterwards. So make sure you win that battle, otherwise the missile artilleries will be lost. But they pack a big punch and they even hit not one, but up to four units. You aim and target one unit, you shoot at it, and it will hit one to three additional targets in range. Of course, there is a new tech tree coming with contemporary era as well. Look at it, nothing really new here, just technologies as you're used to. Um, prepare to research the internet, go for the um, waterfront buildings and the different technologies or uh, research all the cool military stuff. And of course, as you can see, there is a teaser technology that prepares you for the next era to come. We are working at it at the moment as we speak and it's gonna be the tomorrow era. All right, people, that's it for now with our new content, the contemporary era. I hope you're gonna enjoy it and see you next time. 
in a new future. Thank you, Pear, for that sick introduction. So I know that Halloween is all about tricks and treats, but what better treat than an iPhone 6? So as you probably all know, we had an iPhone 6 competition and after what seemed like a morbid eternity, we finally picked a winner. So drum rolls, please. And the winner is Jonas Nupper. So Jonas, congratulations, we'll be in contact and enough said. Okay, I'll stop the really corny jokes and instead show you the new TV spot for Tribal Wars 2. Tribal Wars 2. Celebrate your growing cities and expand your empire. Ally yourself with other players to form mighty tribes. Protect your people against your enemies and turn the tides of war. Play now free at TW2.TV. So guys, I have a confession to make. I kind of sort of did something bad to Marcel. <laughs> but he still has updates on Grappolis and especially on their new event. So let's go to him and see what he has to say. Happy Halloween. Although it seems that I somehow died, I have to tell you something about the upcoming Grippolis Halloween event. Since last year's event was so popular, we decided to do it again, only a little different. We wanted to make some improvements and offer new rewards this time around. For those who missed the previous event, let me explain how it works. Democritus, a famous philosopher and alchemist, will offer his cauldron to you. All you have to do is collect some spooky ingredients, scattered throughout the game. You can do this through common in-game activities like recruiting units, erecting buildings, researching, casting spells, and of course by fighting. Once you collected at least three ingredients, you can start with the mixing process. All you have to do is put exactly three ingredients onto the alchemist's table. The order doesn't matter, and you can also select the same type of ingredient multiple times. Depending on the combination, you will receive a specific reward. If this is your first time trying out a specific combination, the game will conveniently add the mix to your recipe book. It will also display all possible rewards and add discovered recipes accordingly. If you have a specific reward in mind but don't like to experiment, you can also buy the recipe for it or simply ask your friends and alliance members about their discoveries. One of our biggest improvements from last year is the display of expected results. As soon as you put three ingredients onto the alchemist's table, you will know whether or not you have already tried out that combination. If the answer is yes, you will even see the expected reward displayed. On worlds with heroes enabled, you can even unlock Democritus himself as an exclusive hero. As soon as you have mixed 50 rewards, he will join your ranks. A bonus for getting him is that whenever you use a positive effect on the town he's assigned to, there is a chance to double the duration of that effect. Sounds nice, right? But we also established a completely new type of reward which you can earn as a first time exclusive. Rituals. Rituals are effects that will enhance the results of certain divine powers. However, a ritual will only last for a limited amount of time. For instance, the ritual Chain Lightning will change the spell Lightning of Zeus making it able to also destroy 2% of all units in that city, even supporting units. There will be 5 rituals in total and we hope that you will like them. Speaking of rituals, I'll be searching for one that can resurrect me, or else I'll be checking for a nice tombstone. However, have fun with the event and goodbye. Okay, let's take a break from all this ghostly fun and talk about something more mundane, like Rising General's units on this next video. Hi guys, it's me, Diana again, and I'm continuing our introduction videos on our newest game, Rising Generals. Today, I want to show you our different unit types and explain a little bit more how our stone scissor paper system works. Okay, let's begin. The base is the center of your game. 
Like you might remember from the previous video, an option wheel will appear which allows you to control different aspects of the game. In this particular case, I want to go to the barracks, so I'll click that option. Once you are here, you will notice that there are five different unit types. Combat vehicles, tanks, helicopters, suppression, and air force. Within these specific unit types are four subunit types. Take for example, the Lightbringer, the Paladin tank, and the Interceptor. Another thing to notice while you're on the screen are the icons to the left. These icons show the strengths and weaknesses of each unit type through a color coding and plus or minus system. Green is strong against the marked unit type, red is weak, and yellow is neutral. In the case of the Lightbringer, it is weak against tanks and combat vehicles, but very strong against helicopters. Let's move on to another important icon on this screen, which is the information icon. If you click on it, it will show you five helpful symbols. The strength of its attack, the health, the loot it can carry, the fuel usage, and the funds it needs to upkeep it. Remember that once you select an amount, the units are instantly available. Okay, now that we have covered some basic information on the units, let's move on to the meat of this game, the battles. For this, I want to show you the Stone Scissor paper system, so I prepared three enemy outposts with a single unit type in each to illustrate this. On each outpost, there are a hundred of each unit, but with our system, this means you could theoretically beat the enemy with, let's say, 30 vehicles. Numbers aren't as important in this game as knowing how to get the right combination and how to use that against your enemy. I'll demonstrate this principle by sending the perfect counterpart for each outpost. Let's start with the Hail Racer helicopters against armor cars. If you recall the meaning of the symbols, you'll know that this type of helicopter is strong against the armor cars. Let's just see how strong they actually are. Now we're at the battlefield, and you can see how my helicopters are demolishing the enemy. Looks like I made the right decision. In a few seconds, I'll demolish the enemy and I'll be able to raid their outpost. Let's see if we can do the same against helicopters. I put 100 helicopters in the enemy's outpost, so let's see if 30 paladin tanks are enough to wipe them out. So we're back on the battlefield, and as you can see, the helicopters are no match for my paladin tanks. So it won't be long before they're done for, and that was a huge victory. On to the last outpost, where I'll attack 100 light tanks with 30 demolisher tanks. Like the name suggests, I'm hoping the light tanks will get completely demolished. So far, it looks pretty bleak for the light tanks. They're dying off like flies, and my victory will soon come. Okay guys, after showing you three different counterparts, I hope that it comes helpful for you in the future. And I'll see you guys on the battlefield. So now on to the next video where the Tribal Wars team talks to you about their new upcoming fall event. Hi, I'm Thomas, the lead commander of Tribal Wars, and I wanted to talk about our upcoming fall event, which consists of merchants coming near your villages, they're setting up camps and they're bringing uh, special resources with them, gems. You can obtain the gems by training with them for your clay, wood and iron. With the gems, you can uh, participate in a special tombola that the merchants are bringing. In this tombola, you can earn some nice prizes, such as boosting your units or your production. Um, you will have to pay gems to spin the wheel in the tombola, but you will also have free spins from time to time. Uh, the merchants are peaceful, but you also have a different type of interaction with them. Um, since every player will be sending resources to them, you can try to plunder their camp. However, you must know that the merchants are coming with a set of units to defend themselves, and you will probably have to coordinate your attack with friends or tribe mates to make sure you can uh, win the encounter. The event is inspired from our winter event from last year. Um, the merchants are coming a bit earlier this time. We wanted to make some changes to the previous events, meaning that it will be now easier to ship your resources to the merchants to trade with them. Um, we also introduced some new prices, removed some old prices that were not that interesting, and we reworked the whole balancing. We also added achievements so that you can keep a trace of uh, your actions with the merchants. The event will run for a couple of weeks, and it will start at the beginning of November, so stay tuned for more information. 
Our RPG The West is doing an event based on another holiday this month, and that is the Day of the Dead. So let's see what they have to say. Hey, I'm Stephanie, and I'm the new game designer for The West, and I'm here today to present our new event, which is called Dias de los Muertos. As soon as the event starts, you will see our new currency for the event at the top bar, which is the Campasuccio flower. The Campasuccio flowers can be acquired through any activity within the game. On the left icon bar, you'll find our event icon. If you click on that, there's your personal event graveyard. Here you can decorate your graveyard with the Campasuccio flowers. And the more flowers you collect, the greater the graveyard will look. For each of the 10 decoration stages, there'll be a nice reward waiting for you. We also have a community event where each player participates automatically. That means all the flowers you collect will be summed up in a great pool. And with the greater this pool gets, the more rewards the world will collect. After collecting 100 Campasuccio flowers, you unlock our card game, the Loteria de Muertos. Like the graveyard, you'll find the icon on the left icon bar. Within the Loteria de Muertos screen, you'll see two cards. If you pick the win card, you can choose between collecting the reward or going to the next stage. The game has five stages in total. With every stage, the value of the rewards will grow. So it's up to you whether you keep the reward or play for higher ones. For every event day, you'll get one card game for free. If you have the first purchaser bonus, you'll get a second one. Next to the event currency, you can access our help screen where you can find more detailed information about the event. I hope you'll enjoy our event, have fun, good luck with the card game and see you soon. Edo Games does more than making games, we also offer scholarships. Let's go on to the next video to see who our new recipient is. The School for Games in Berlin was founded in 2011 and is focused on educating future developers in the browser and mobile game industry. We support the talented 19-year-old Tabea with a full scholarship for the two-year education in game graphics. The interest in the game industry comes through my father because he always played uh, also when I was young and I grew up with all the games. My speciality is um, 2D art, but I'm trying to improve my skills in 3D arts as well and maybe in concept arts and user interface. <laughs> At Idum Games I'm looking forward to the people, um, my new work and the atmosphere of working there. The reason why we picked uh, School for Games to have the scholarship with Tabea, for example, was that uh, for us it's very hard to get fresh talent and good experts here at work. Uh, it's not that romantic anymore that people with just a computer game love can start working in a games company. Um, we think that School for Games has a very fresh and very unique approach to in teaching people and yeah, forming them into experts. Cooperation with Inno Games, it's a very important signal and uh, it helps to have a perspective uh, later in the industry uh, with a job at Inno Games. And that's it for this episode of Inno Games TV. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll make sure to bring you the latest updates on all our games. Bye!